Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. I hope you have a very good day today. Today is the almost the final class. So tomorrow we will be doing the survey and also we will be finishing the classes. So, which is very, very good, definitely. So as usual, we're going to check about the platform. So here we go. So this is the class of today, efforts to bridge the gap of generation. We are not discussing that much into that one because we have done a lot of those. And the homework is 4.7, but it's supposed we have finished already everything, okay? Later on today, whenever I check the second time, the attendance, we are going to see how is everybody doing, so you know. If you haven't finished, tomorrow is the last day before the class. Okay, it's very important for you to finish, okay? So we are going to check the attendance, of course. <laughs> Just a few people today. Ada Sena Cáceres. Present teacher. Good. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto, sorry. Present teacher. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so let's start the class of today. We're almost done and actually we're going to do the last part. Uh, okay, got you, Juan Miguel. And Thank you, teacher. Good, and also Yvonne, let me just check into that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the book by now. Okay, here is it. So this is like the last part we are gonna check right now. It says the generation gap at the workplace. You know that this is the topic for the last unit. And then it says how to avoid run on sentences, part two. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercises below. Heidi, could you please help me reading on this? The first one, right? Uh, yes, the, the chart. Uh, how to avoid run-on sentences, part two. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. A run-on sentence occurs when two or more independent clauses also known as complete, complete sentences are presented without any punctuation to sign now when one ends and the other starts. Run on. Generation based employee affinity groups are a waste of time. Managers, managers shouldn't assume people need special treatment. Correct. Generation based employee affinity groups are a waste of time. Managers shouldn't assume people need special treatment. Continue. Uh, yeah, please. You can use two strategies to avoid run-on sentences. Period after first clause, plus capital letter. The run-on can be broken into two separate sentences. Run-on, the, the boomer is mystified by the Facebook, the millennial who wears flip-flop in the office. Correct. 
the movement is mystified by Facebook. The millennial who wears flip flop, flip flop in the office. B, semicolon before the second clause. A run on. Generation based employees affinity groups are a waste of time. Managers shouldn't assume people need special treatment. Correct. Uh, can you make it a little bit up, please, to read the correct one? Okay, thank you. Generation based employees affinity groups are a waste of time. Managers shouldn't assume people need special treatment. Okay, very good. Thank you. So that is it. So uh, this is kind of easy. I mean, two clauses. If you do not separate them, it's not correct. That is the only thing. I mean, it's like uh, you can use either the period and the capital letter or the semicolon. That is it. I guess there is no big deal into that one. Do you have any question? Okay, if there are no questions, let's make the last exercise of the book. So number nine, read the following sentences, identify the run-ons and correct them using the strategies mentioned in the box above. So there are six sentences or ideas that we need to split into different clauses and you can use either a period or a semicolon. I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to check into that one, of course.
Okay, so okay. let's work on that one. Uh, who wants to say number one? Maybe me. Of course, go ahead, please. The mindset is to make that person your partner, period. It, it, it involves, it involves. Yeah, it involves. Okay, so that is it. It's going to be exactly there. I mean, uh, the mindset is to make that person your partner, period, capital letter. It involves them in everything they do. Good. Number two. I could try. Of course, go ahead. Okay, it says companies will need to embrace radical change in recruitment. Semicolon, a corporate culture will actively demonstrate its respect and inclusion for its multi-regional workforce. Very Work. good, very nice. So companies will need to embrace radical changes in recruitment. So there a comma is not good enough. We need to either use semicolon or a period. So that is important that you have to remember that a comma is not good, okay? Number three, anybody? Maybe me? Okay, go ahead, please. Oh, it's number four or number three? Number three. I, I made number four. No, maybe someone <laughs> is number three. <laughs> I would do number okay. four. <laughs> okay, very good. We're going to wait for you. <laughs> so somebody else wants to share number three. I will try again. Of course, go ahead. We replace a real understanding of individuals, 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 yeah. uh, in any given generation with false assumption about the entire generation, semicolon. This can be particularly distributed in the workplace. Okay, again, so that is going to be not a comma. It's going to be either a period or a semicolon. Very good. Anna Claudia, this is your Okay. Time. The generations are catching up in terms of basic capabilities, comma. In this case, for me, it's comma. They exhibit different interests and emphasis. It should be a semicolon, yeah. Semicolon, ah, yeah. okay. That would be the pause is but good. Semicolon, semi, semi, okay, comma is when the idea is the same and there is like a continuation. Well, in this case also it's like a continuation, but they are kind of different uh, clauses. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's related, but it's telling like something additional, right? Mm, yes, because I thought it was talking about the same. Okay, but I got it now. Okay, good, perfect. Mm -hmm. Number five, anybody? Anybody number five? People, per people perceive each other differently than they really are, period. Economic consequences include millennials quitting because they feel misunderstood. Perfect, that is it. So uh, that will be exactly there is the pause. So, and then you can use period or a semicolon. And number six, who's going to <coughs> tell us number six? Mm, it could be millennials are supposedly tech savvy, period. Baby boomers are loyal to their employers. Very good. So that is it, right? It's the same pause, but we need to use either a period or a semicolon. Okay, got it. 
Very good. As you can see, this is a piece of cake. And actually, that is it, my friend. This is the end. This is the end. So, of course, we're going to continue with the topic that we were checking last class. That it was about uh, interview questions. Today, I guess, yes, we will be able to practice a little interviews together. So, the next question we have on this list is what would your first 30, 60 or 90 days look like in this role? Actually, this is like a, a strategy, you know, whenever you want to implement a change into any process that you would like or improve anything into any procedures, you will be able to, to use this kind of technique, right? 30 days, 60 days and 90 days. How is going to be the change that you want to implement during these days. Anyways, this is a regular question. So, Jose Wilfredo, could you please help me with this one? Uh, yes, teacher. What will you first 30, 60s or 90s days looks like in this role? If you are applying for a senior or leadership role, you are probably going to get asked this question. Change our at this stage of the interview. You already know a lot of about your future position and the company. And now it's time to show off your knowledge in your field and explain how you are going to start making things happen at the company. So here is how to answer a question. For the first 30 days, you're probably going to need to get to know the company first. You're going to be learning as much as possible, including information on what does the company do, what are the what are the key process, uh, processes, uh, what does your department do, what are the current problem, what are the current problems and challenges. Uh, where, where can you help? Then during the 60s, uh, 60 days, you'll start, you'll start, start making things happen from all the until you gather it. So just a handful, three to five. In initiatives, you in, could take on initiatives. In initiatives, oh yeah, yeah. Initiatives you couldn't take on. You audit the company email marketing strategy and suggest improvements. You help come up with better ad copies for Facebook marketing. You help the team with their own goal in marketing initiatives. With the first ninety days you are already have started making an impact. Describe several things. You are going to be functioning, functioning better. Uh, on, online ads are going to be performing better by 10 to 20%. Email marketing operations are going to be more streamlined, taking significantly less manpower. Good, what did you get from this? Uh, maybe this is for someone that wants to apply to the new position and uh, maybe is, is working in the in a company and he think uh, growing in a company. Uh, he think growing in a company, growing up, I guess that we could say that growing up uh, in the in the uh, in the company that is working and well first, uh, he or she needs to know uh, what steps has to follow to make that progress. And first, you you have to know uh, what the what the company do is really important because if you don't know what the company what the company does, um, what the company do or, or make, so you may be be. Um, be missing out some uh, 
interesting topic that that your or interesting things that your company does. In that situation, I guess that first we need to know uh, the the. I I don't remember it, but specific that specific word. Uh, the line of business, I guess that could be. Okay. Maybe you have to understand the, the the line of business that this your company, and then you have to to make that those progress uh, be possible for your company. After that, you understand the 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 business that your company uh, took. And after that, you when you cover uh, the 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 knowledge about the what the company do or does, uh, maybe then you make that that those um, air run could, um, can be possible. You could apply to to grow in the same company. Okay, very good, perfect. Yes, actually, it's, this is like a plan already that you already have to have, right, and present. So whenever you go to an interview, you will be able to, to say, okay, in the first month, I'm going to do this, and the second this, and then the third one, I'm going to be doing this. Of course, it has to be something realistic. So because if you get the position, of course, you need to go and do it right. And then if it's not working properly, the plan at the very beginning was not good. And of course, you can do some adjustments. That doesn't mean that there are no adjustments. Okay, number 11, are you a team player? That is for Anna Claudia. Of course. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> and yes. <laughs> okay, are you a team player? Whatever you're applying, the answer to this question should be a yes. Even if you're applying for a completely solo role, chances are you're still going to have to work in a team occasionally. We recommend being very specific about your answers here. Don't just say yes. Give the interviewer an exact example of when you excelled, excelled, I say excelled. Excelled. excelled at working with a team. Uh, possible answers. Uh, sample answer one. I'm much better at working in a team than alone. Actually, that's what I love about working in advertising. Everyone has their own specific type of a creative spark. And when you combine it all, magic happens. I get my <laughs> <Well, laughs> I'm good at both leading and following in terms of creativity and brainstorming. I'm also super receptive to others' ideas and do my best to help them execute it without not nay. Nay. Yeah, not. Nay. Nay. Uh -huh. nay saying or criticism. Okay, I, I go with this second one. Okay. Example, okay, can I read the sample answer too? Of course, go ahead. Okay, sample answer two. Yes, yeah, definitely I excel at teamwork. This one time while working at uh, Yada Yada, <laughs> you say Yada Yada. <laughs> yeah. I was assigned to an existing team working on a web application for a business process management company. They were working on a tight deadline and needed help on the AP side. I optimized their development circles and oversaw a team at three developers while collaborating with the other two dev teams, develop teams. Everything went pretty well and we managed to finish the project on time. Mm -hmm. Good, so which, uh, well, for first of all, what did you get from this one and which answer did you like the most? Okay, uh, yes, what I'm learning here is that it's not only to say yes, you need to tie the yes with uh, an example or something you achieved in the past, because that will give the interviewer like a better picture of your work. And the one I better identify is in the sample answer one when it says the second part, I'm good at both leading and follow following in terms of creativity and brainstorming. I'm also super receptive to other ideas and do my best to help them execute it without nice sayer or 
criticism. What is nay saying? And nay is a synonym of refuse to deny. So something like that. And criticism, of course, you know, what's that? Yeah, criticism, but nay is the first time I see it. Uh, it it's this uh, like a one word, nay saying, or you can use nay with another. Uh, well, you can use nay separate. You can just serious nay. I nay on that, so you can say that. Okay, 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 I got it. <clears throat> okay, I, I identify with that one because uh, I like and, and I do it. I work in, as, as a teamwork, but sometimes it happens that it's frustrating when nobody goes in the same rhythm. They know they're not going or working in the same line and you need to repeat, repeat, you know, one thing that I um, been uh, observing of these new generations, when we have new team uh, uh, teammates in the in the sales group, is that they want to learn everything, just uh, hearing, listening, but they don't take notes. Oh, and that is the V. <laughs> the big issue I'm facing with all of them. I always say, okay, I'm going to explain you, but please take note, please. Because I, it's not that I don't want to repeat the same. What happened is that we're uh, wasting time and we need to make our best. And, and no, they don't like it, but that sometimes I force them. <laughs> and, and it's better because it's not possible that your brain will get everything in one day with a lot of procedures. Uh, you need to do with tools and stuff like that. That is what I've been observing that new hires, they don't like to write, they don't like to take notes and they want to learn the thing because, because they are great. No, come on. And, and, and yes, it's, in this situation, it's hard to be in a team or what? We need to do it because of, sometimes our schedules or sometimes our uh, uh, days off depends on the team and so we need to to learn how to work and make team work mm -hmm. okay so definitely i mean that is that is true and uh, yeah i totally agree with you that it's the first answer is is better because you play with both answers right i mean i can be a leader and of course i can follow other ideas and uh, i'm receptive so that is very good so you mm -hmm. can uh, sometimes definitely you can be a leader, but sometimes you need to just listening. Exactly. And, yeah, very good. Good, good. And uh, the good thing is that we also check some other words. Mm -hmm. uh, Name. First time I see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So number 12 says, are you a risk taker? This is a good one. And Giselle is going to tell us. Okay, teacher. Are you a risk taker? taker this one's pretty tricky as the answer here depends on your profession and field ask yourself is risk taking a valuable skill for the job if you're a pilot for example the answer should be a strict no if on the other hand you're a day trader there then risk is an essential part of your job so depending on how valuable risk is for your job answer accordingly you could also give a more strategic answer. Let's say, for example, you work in investment bank banking. Yep. Banking, okay. You need to be a risk taker to an extent, but being too risk friendly might be might make the entire company go bankrupt. Bankrupt. The strategy is such a case will be to show that you that you're all about calculator calculated risk you're willing to take chances but only when the odds are in your favor as with most interview questions you should give examples of situations where you had to take risks and what the end what the end results were what did you get from this that you have to be very smart <laughs> answering this, this question. Uh, and you have to answer uh, uh, thinking about uh, your the things that, that maybe you achieve in 
in your current job on or in I don't know and or in jobs that you had before but they but you have to to like yours start how do you say teacher como como el punto de partida o partiendo de the starting point the starting point yeah, yeah. like your starting point must be a uh, things that you already achieve you have to be realistic to with this one not answer what the the man the hiring manager wants to hear you need to uh, answer what yeah that what you achieved before and i i and that the paragraph said at the end so give examples of situations where you had to take risks and what the answer so were so actual situations not not imaginary scenarios just the real things that you achieved before very good perfect so that is actually so true i mean uh, yeah there are uh, questions that of course you know the answers for example the previous one right are you a team player yes okay you have to say yes even though maybe it's kind of difficult for you but you have to say yes right but in this one well we need to evaluate so of course you know that the interview is for a certain position and then you can evaluate in a way that you are going to decide what will be an answer for this kind of question so that is a good one and uh, yes, uh, we're going to check about the answers, the possible answers. Let's see, uh, Raymond, can you please read this ones? Is it possible for you? Not possible. Ada Cáceres. Okay, teacher. The possible answer, some, and sample answer, uh, one, yes, I am risk taker. It's believed that to achieve real results, you always need to be willing to take a certain level of risk. Pretty much any marketing in initiative you launch is tied to risk. You can plan everything from the beginning, beginning to the end. Sorry, did you? Beginning beginning till the end but no matter but no matter how well you plan it out thing might just not work out it's just part of the job in order to success you need to make a launch risk companies on regular basis and hopefully 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 and Sorry. Hopefully, any one in every five is going to bring you massive results. Sample answers too. I am not risk taker. I'm more of risk manager. I've as somewhat been in finance years. For years, I cannot say with a lot of confidence that there is in everything. The most important things are the one minimize, minimize your risk and to minimize potential damage. Damage? Damage. If you damage is everything goes very, very more, very wrong. While working in the instrument investment bank, heights, he was a very, a very interesting policies the investing in new features. Fintech, fintech fintech projects we use it to appoint more shop hide the projects as well as anything that had an experimental business model or strategist was the invest in proven tech as in proven product product market market fit business model etc in the most cases they were runner of companies companies we wouldn't invest the that an innovate company does work and the over news they will instead within style invest their rather competitor. More often than not, this ended, ended up being more protective, protective, 
Cowboy. And significa less right. Is okay. the I'll go ahead. And the for example is the is not um it's not that uh risk the take are most regimented and um, but the most important these are the minimize the juries and will they embed the investigation the police in the investigation for the projects on okay very good so yes i mean that depends and uh as we were saying before uh, which answer do you believe is better for you ada Well, for me, the first one is very good because you say, I mean, everything has a risk, right? So you can plan everything, but even if you plan everything, I mean, there is kind of a risk. So you need to handle that in certain way in everything that you do. Even, I mean, for everything. Do you remember, for example, the last time that I had a, a power outage? So I had to decide to go to other place and teach you the class or uh, to move the classes. So we finished not tomorrow, but on Thursday. So at the end I had, took my decision, but it was a good decision. It was a risk to cross all the city and go to other place and check if everything was going to be fine. I didn't know, but we need to manage that one. So that happens on any, actually on any decision that we might take. Number 13 has says, how do you deal with pressure or stressful situation? That is a good one as well. Let's see, uh, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Not possible, Danny. Okay. Uh, how do you deal with pressure uh, or a stressful situation? If you're applying for a high stress job, you're guaranteed to get asked this question. And the aim of this question is to see if you are the type of person who survive working a job. All fall, all fall through the cracks when the first signs of trouble show up. Obviously, you wouldn't answer with the following. Well, I end up having a panic attack, crying and running away from work. Instead, answer as follows. Uh, say that yes, you, don't, you, you do tend to perform well during stressful situations. Give one or two examples of a situation where you have to perform well under pressure. Now, let's go through some real life examples. Oh, okay. uh, well, no, what did you get from this one? Um, well, when, when, when someone asks you, ask us, in a job interview, and this question is very um, important. And how how we deal with a situation with high level of stress or or or, or pressure, and we have to um, we don't have to to answer with. Uh, like the example of saying, yeah, yeah I, I don't know what to, what to do when when someone when something strikes or appears. Um, no, we have to to give example with situation and and on, under stress. Uh, we we have in some in under stress in in how we respond to the situation. And I, I understood that. Very well. So yes, I mean, even that question uh, or even the interview is going to be like an evaluation if you are able to work under stress, right, situation, because that is stressful. You are anxious, you're nervous. But if you handle the interview in a very good way, I mean, that is a good sign out. And if you are able to provide, I mean, of course, the answer for that one is yes. And then how you, you are able to react 
in a difficult situation under stressful, right? So the, uh, exa the examples are going to be for, let's see, uh, Raymond is not here, we say, right? Marcus. Okay, okay. And it's sample answer one, number one. So I can particularly say I enjoy stressful situation. I'm very good at working under pressure. During chaos and panic, I tend to take a step back, think, plan, and prioritize. For example, there have been times I had to juggle multiple university projects and, and assignments at the same time. I would break up a large assignment into small individual tasks and prioritize based on how fast I could complete each task, figuring out which task will take the longest, which project had the early dead, early, early deadline. This way, my work became a lot more manage, manageable. The most time I had to experience such situation, the better I perform, perform overall. Um, sample answer two. I actually prefer working under pressure. I look at, at it as a challenge, a situation where I really have to up my game to succeed. As a cook, working under pressure is pretty much part of the job. I've been in several situations where the restaurant was understaffed, understaffed for the occasion. Heck, it's pretty much a constant thing during peak season. When there is when there is a ton of order coming in and we can barely keep up, I tend to get significantly more productive than usual. Good. What did you get from this one? Okay, uh, uh, these two samples are really inter interesting. Okay. Um, Which one would you prefer? Uh, I prefer um, the first one. Um, yeah, because um, in, in this answer, the person explained how, how he can or how she can handle with the pressure and and describe a plan, a little plan. And sometimes I do it the same way. I try to break up all the tasks or the longest tasks into a small task so I can mm. see it the way clearly. Because if, you, if we think in a one task, in a big task, um, we um, uh, delay the time to start thinking about how we can start um, because we think in doing in, in a one step so it's not it's not correct I think it's better to break up the task break up the one task into a small task so you can see how we can uh, start step by step um yeah it's important to to say that that we have that we can perform we can have a good perform under pressure and if it's better for us that it's better to say that we that we can manage or handle the pressure and we see it like a challenge because at the end we we will find a way to to solve it, the problems and work under pressure if we see it like a challenge. Okay. It would be funny. <laughs> Definitely, actually, that is good. I mean, the two answers are good, but of course, as you say, I prefer the first one because it's what you should do. I mean, in whenever there is a crisis, you need to relax, right? Stop, think, analyze, break everything into prioritizing or what you need to be and uh, why it needs to be done faster or sooner or so things like that definitely and uh, that is the way for you to work under pressure of course it's easy to say it but it's difficult to do it right i mean and every person is uh, different so we handle this in different situations or different ways uh, and actually there are people that cannot work under stress so uh, of course they uh, they don't go to this kind of job interviews.
Some words here. Uh, what is uh, deadline? The time you have like uh, the limit to present or to complete a task or a document, whatever. But it's the, 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 the limit, the last time. Very good. Yeah, this is like uh, the platform, right? We have the deadline until tomorrow before the class. So that is the last time for us to do. If you have, haven't done that one, please finish that as soon as possible. And there was another one. Let's check. No, I don't think that's it. Okay, so let's go to number 14. Do you prefer hard work or smart work? I guess the answer is obvious, but Roxana is going to tell us about. Hello, Roxana. Hi. Okay. Do you prefer hard work or smart work? By definition, hard work is when you, well, work hard. It's, sorry, it's when you are willing to put, to put in a lot, a lot of work to get the job done. Smart work, on the other hand, means doing the work efficiently. If you manage to get the job done in two hours instead or five, of five, with the same end result, you, you're doing smart work. Keep in mind throughout that by asking this question, the interviewer is looking to understand what your work ethic, ethic is like. Meaning, they are looking for a healthy combination of, of both, not just one. That is, when they want to be the candidate who not only think smartly, but works hard as well. So your answer here shouldn't be one side. Oh, I love smart work. That's when you come out with what to do and make other people to do it, right? Instead, explain how to excel at about, at both, sorry. Okay, what did you get from this? Well, um, in short, we in general, in general knows that some, some people uh, maybe have the facility to work very quickly in different tasks because uh, maybe they have the knowledge or uh, they have, uh, they can apply uh, extra tools or stuff to finish the work um, in the most efficient, efficient way. But um, if you, maybe if you are part of that person, uh, you don't, need to uh, always looking for a, ex no, you, you need to uh, focus in your work and focus just, just your answer in both uh, ways. Maybe uh, if you have the fa facility to uh, finish your task in efficient form, maybe, uh, you, you can support another uh, college, for example, or just uh, not uh, thinking always in work quickly and finish uh, my task and buy. Maybe you need to uh, in include in your interviews uh, that it, maybe you, you work more efficiently when you uh, Say, for example, in home office, but you take your time and try to uh, analyze your task and try to show, share that answer in not only focusing work in, in, 
no, no es inefficiently, es... The, the thing is that when you uh, have that type of question in your interview, you need to uh, take uh, a lot of things in count, maybe uh, the time, the type of task, your college, but uh, you don't need to be focused only in finish your work uh, quickly and quickly form and, and that is because uh, maybe uh, you are a good um, part of the team if you work efficiently and you were always uh, fast but maybe if the company is looking for a one person that support that other uh, college, maybe uh, the rest of the team is, is, if the rest of the team is not working in the same line, uh, they have uh, troubles in the future and maybe they uh, take notes when the, interviewer as asking for that because uh, when you receive work, well, I think that when you receive answer that some, some like uh, people like that, that they focus in the own work and try to uh, finish quickly and it's more individual, individualistic way, I guess. And maybe I think that the company is always looking for a, a, someone who can work in a team because always can support another person, another a person of the team. And maybe if the person answer something like that or don't be carefully with the answer, can be a um, effect in the interview. Okay. Yeah, very good. I mean, yeah, this is like a balanced one, right? So mm -hmm. yes, we need somebody that is smart and make other people do things as a leader, but also we need somebody that works, okay? That is there sitting there. It's not that you go and say, you do this, you do this, you do this, and then you go home, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to yeah. be like a balanced thing. Good. And maybe you always need something like that in your work team, but it's, I think that it's not good just uh, work with person like that because uh, sometimes uh, you need uh, support that other uh, activities. For example, when you have in your team sometimes uh, illness, or with a license of absence. So it's, yeah, you, you always need um, a smart person that work in a smart way, but they can help you. Okay. Yeah, actually that is it. I mean, it's a balance. The answer at least for this question is like a balance between one and the other one and this is like a sample uh, for you to check how you will be able to answer this one let's see fernando is it possible for you not possible maria alejandra okay okay I don't particularly have a preference. I believe that both hard and smart work is important to get the best recipe. Smart work one, on one hand that you figure out the best and most efficient way to get things done. Hard work on the other hand means that you do the job right. Even if there's no way to do it, to do it as smart or efficiently, you'll be willing to put in long hours of work to get it done. I'm the type that does both. 
for example, offer smartphone during my time at make up corporation. I was in charge of the sales department as a, a process improvement initiative, a uh, migrate from an update in house tier tier in tier, sure. uh -huh, to paper drive. Pipe drive. Pipe drive. <laughs> this improved the department production by around uh, 20%. On the other hand, the whole migration process took around three months of a hard work has the so has the software we were using was update training to learn how to map and migrate our data was a lot more complicated than we expect. Very good. What did you get from this one? Um, maybe it's necessary to have a uh, the both hands uh, with a uh, work hard and uh, a smart word because I think that the combination or the both is uh, the best option or a good idea when you need to have a um, resource um, weekly or fast compared that you decided to only take one option because maybe you see a different perception or the view if you try to complement uh, both uh, tools. Okay. Yeah, actually this is a very good example, right? Because it says, I mean, the example at the end of the answer is, is very good. Uh, I created an improvement, a process improvement, so, and uh, the productivity increased in 20%, but that procedure took around three months. So it was very hard, very difficult, and I was there doing the, pro the process. So that is a very good example. So things like that are the ones that we need to look for whenever we are in an interview, right? To pro provide a very nice answer. Before at number 15, we're going to stop and check the attendance, my friends. It's nine already. Very quickly, right? Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Good. Present teacher. Sorry, I'm Juan Miguel. Ah, okay, good. Eh, Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Sumaña Orellana. <coughs> Roxana Ipet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. And Sulaima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Got you, Yvonne. Okay. Before we move on, I'm going to tell you how are you doing with the platform. So remember that tomorrow is the very last day. So as I see here, Ada Susana is fine. She finished already. Uh, Ana Claudia is missing the week four. Exactly. The, I'm going to complete it. Okay. And the final in, test. In the final test, that's right. <laughs> okay. okay. Dani Josue is complete. Then Fernando is complete. Then Francisco is missing week three, week four, the midterm test, and the final test. Remember that tomorrow during the day is the last day. The other one is Heidi is complete. Everything's done. 
Iliana Giselle is also done. Irene is not with us anymore. Jose Marcos is uh, complete as well. Jose Osmin is also complete. Jose Wilfredo is missing just a part of the week four and the final test. Let's see, Juan Miguel Brand is missing just one part of the week four and the final test. Thank you, teacher. Luis Umaña is, uh, well, is missing just one part of the week two, and that is it. Um, Maria Alejandra is complete. Ramon Enrique mm, is missing the final test, and there is a part on the week two as well. Roxana is complete. Uh, this is not you. Let me just move to the next page. Okay, Steven is not with us anymore. And Suleyma Yvonne is just missing one part on the week two and the rest is done. So in case you still haven't done the platform, I believe that most of you are missing just a little part. Um, tomorrow is the last day, so please do it. Okay, so we can move on to the next level. Good. Okay, so we're gonna continue with the topic. We're almost done actually. So it says, how quickly do you adapt to new technology? Fernando. Yes, teacher. Could you please read this one? Okay. How quickly do you adapt to new technology? Today, whether you are applying for a software engineering job or as a cashier in a supermarket, you are going to need to use technology at least on some level. Technology. Very... Technology. Oh. Tech. Tech. Technology. Uh -huh. Technology. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. It's very common for a company to adopt new tech or new tech. Tech. Okay. New tech. New point of, of service system. Self checkout. Kiosks. Kiosks. Kiosks customer management software, and whatever else. So you should be able to pick a new tech as up. Any new change shouldn't completely disrupt your world. So when answering this question, you should talk about how tech savvy you are. Savvy. Savvy, yeah. What is savvy? Savvy is that you know, you know about technology. Okay. Okay, please um, continue. Okay. Uh, possible answers, simple answers. I'm pretty tech savvy. I've worked with a lot of different point of service systems so far and have zero difficult, difficulties learning how to use new ones. As a given, I own a PC, have used Office 365 and all the usual stuff. Simple answer too. I've always been inter interested in tech. In fact, I am the type of person to actively seek out new software to help solve business problems at work. I've worked with three different customer management software in the past, such as PyDrive, Salesforce, and so CRM. Good, what do you get from this? Well, it's today te technology and dominate the business. You need uh, you need technology and you need um, evolve. Evolve because if you don't apply um, some technology, uh, the your competitors maybe can take advantage uh, over you. And today, well, it's very important and all the people need to know about about a uh, use computer or I don't know cell phone or some system. Uh, I think that one basic thing or one important thing that people need to know is um, use a, a web explorer because all the information are in the internet. Even the system of some company are system web, and it's very, very important. 
Okay, very good. Yes, actually, that is true. I mean, this is uh, something that we, uh, not only for, for us to answer in an interview, but in general, we need to know about technology, at least the most basic, right? So how to share screen, how to go into another computer, how to, I mean, create meetings, things like that. So it's very important. I really like the second answer. I mean, uh, that is a, a very complete one and uh, um, both are very good but this is more more into management right because this software as pad drive sales for zoho those are for for leads for whenever you want to uh, dominate i mean check about sales and things like that so it's going to be very good number 16 do you have any interest outside of work mm, this is something that is not that common but it might be that the question is there so we need to be ready francisco eduardo not possible okay no worries so anna claudia teacher sorry i'm here <laughs> okay go ahead go ahead please okay teacher number 16 yep okay do you have any interest outside of work uh, if the interviewer asks you this question, take it as a good sign. 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 Sorry, teacher. It means that they like your professional background. And now they, they're just trying to get to know you and see if you're, you're a good fit for the company culture. It's very hard to go wrong here, unless you are going to answer something like, I have literally no hobbies, or all, all I do is play video games all day. Do tell about your hobbies and interests, and you are, you are all set. Bonus point is you can mention something that also relevant to your job. Creative writing if you are applying for a copywriting job, for example. Okay, continue, please. Possible answer. Simple answer one. I am a bit fun and creative writing. I have my own personal short history blog and, con and contribute actively to several online writing communities, such as a writing prompt on Reddit. Oh, I am also a huge fan of the New York Giants. Giants. Sample. Giants. Oh, no. Sorry, this. Giants. Giants. Thank you, teacher. Simple answer two. Well, I'm very interested in all sorts of sport. I like to keep active, and it really help, helps keep me productive. Over the past two years, I be done a bit of everything. Fencing, archery, hiking, and several other things. Okay, so what did you get from this one? Um, uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, kind of of question uh, is a uh, uh, that uh, they probably say this is a good sign uh, because uh, uh, the the first part is the professional I think is the professional skill. And the second, the second part is the the uh, note uh, notes that if the person is aligned to the aligned to the company culture, uh, because uh, if the person uh, have um, this uh, those uh, those uh, things uh, professional skill in a, a 
and culture aligned to the, the company culture uh, is it, probably the, that uh, these people uh, get uh, hearing. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So this is something that is kind of good, right? Because they are asking to about your personal life is because they would like to know a little bit more about you, not your only the professional, but on, also the person. Good number 17 is going to be for Juan Miguel. Okay. Number 17. What do you think? What do you think our company organization could do better? Well, this one's interesting. Why not too common for most organizations? It's a favorite among state companies. How come? Well, answering this question show a couple of things that you are really passionate about the organization and have your and have done your research and are not afraid of giving feedback. Obviously, you should be very political about your feedback. You can't just say that. And, and this is, and that's an incorrect example. Well, a lot of things really. I'm not enjoying this interview right here, for example, and your probe kind of sucks. No offense, but hey, there's, there's always room for improvement. Am I right? Instead, you want to show off the research you've done. Talk about anything that might seem off about your product business. And there is a correct example. I actually went through your resume builder before coming to the interview <clears throat> and found several things that seem kind of counterintuitive. Intuitive. Not to say that it's too hard to understand or something, but it took me a while to figure out, figure out some stuff. If you want, I can open up, I can open up my laptop and show you what I mean. Okay, what do you get from this? Um, can you uh, go up, please, teacher? Yeah. Um, for this, I think. Uh, you have to be very polite uh, when you when you answer these kind of questions because uh, they can uh, or, or obviously not the company but who represents the company will be kind of uh, sensitive. I don't know if that is correct. Sensitive and if you don't use the correct words or the correct uh, argument, uh, the person or the people could be uh, feel offended by your answer. Uh, obviously, uh, we need to uh, to be since sincere, sincero, sincere, sincere, but uh, like I told you before, we need uh, to be polite with our answers, okay? Um, and there, there are two examples, one uh, incorrect and one uh, uh, correct, okay? Uh, the two answers uh, are talking about the same topic or the same thing, but uh, there is a huge uh, difference in the way uh, those two people uh, talk about the topic or talk about the thing they were uh, talking to. Uh, the first one was uh, rude, and the second one was very polite and very uh, explicative. I don't know how to say this. Uh, very detailed. Very detailed. Uh -huh. And I think this. OK, very good. Yeah, actually, this is not that difficult. You just need to be careful of you say, right? So yeah, it's not that yeah. you're going to say, you know, this company, I mean, when I was coming, the secretary didn't say hello. I don't know what's going on with her. Uh, that is not good. So you should provide a feedback. I mean, I, I saw that we can improve this and this and I can do it for you if you want. So that is a good thing. And uh, the final ones are behavioral. So about behavior. This one is going to be for, let's see, Giselle. Yeah, teacher. 
And number one, give an example of how you have handled a challenge in the workplace before. Mm -hmm. Okay. What the interviewers want to know in this case is how well you handle conflict and difficulties. So the answer here should be pretty straightforward. You should describe a challenge you face at work and explain how you solve it. Possible answers. Sample answer one. During my last job as a Google Ads expert, one of the company clients had accidentally butchered their own ad account. I noticed this over the week and saw that they were basically wasting money on nothing. I took the initiative and immediately got in, got in touch with the client to let them know about the issue. Then we set up an impromptu impromptu meeting impromptu. Mm -hmm. impromptu meeting on the same day and fix the account before any real damage could be done. Sample answer two. During my last job, I was managing the creative and web dev team in charge of creating an online store for a client. Two days before deploying, we found a major bug that messed up the whole from the whole front and user experience. Now we could have pushed the, the deadline a bit, but that would have messed up the relationship with the client. The project was already postponed once because of unforeseen, unforeseen circumstances. So this one was a do or die. I assembled a task force consisting of web developers from my team, as well as some software engineers from another department. We focused 100% of our time on fixing the issue and actually managed to launch on time at the end. Good, what did you get from this? Yeah, you, could you move the, oh, yeah. <laughs> for the yeah. first? So that I think that the most important thing about this point is practically like, like said in the first line that you must to show how you handle the conflict and difficulties in the company and how you could help with your abilities and your audio skills and all the skills that you have, how you can help uh, or actually help, not just uh, I, I, I'm here, 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 and I can do this, this. So you don't have just to say it, you have to, to explain yourself and show that you can do with uh, the, the things that you said uh, with examples. And I think that the experiences, if, if you have experiences and you can, and you can put, set examples, real examples about conflicts that you already solved, that helps a lot. Okay, very good, perfect. Yes, actually, well, to be honest with you, this is one of the most common questions that I have received in an interview. So tell me about a challenge that you had and how you overcome that one. So yeah, you have to be ready with that one. Once I had this problem at work and the situation was this, but what I did was this and the result was this. So that is a very, very common question. I don't know if you have the experience on this one, but for me, it's one of the most, most common. So you need to be ready with some like that, okay? Uh, this one is very similar to the other one, but let's check it out. So I'll give an example of when you perform well under pressure. That is going to be for, let's see, Jose Wilfredo. Give an example of when you perform well under pressure. 
Uh, for any high stress work environment, you are warranted to get asked this question. Possible answer, simple. Simple answer one, I actually perform a lot of better when under a lot of pressure. The sense of urgency and importance really motivates me to up my game and make sure everything works out right. When I worked at a financial an, an analyst, uh, a made up finance company in, most of the work was very high pressure. I have to go above and beyond. Uh, the line and of duty to make sure we met the thing that the lines set by our clients. This often mean working 12 hour work days and sometimes working over the weekend. Sample answer two. As a seasonal worker, my entire career is high pressure. <laughs> My last position was as a line cook during the summer at the summer rest as the at the some restaurant in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Around three out of four of the most were super high stress. There was a lot of work, and the restaurant was pretty much as pretty much always full. Had I even had to skip breaks just to make sure we wouldn't be understaffed. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, well, uh, work with pressure is sometimes is good, but not of the most of the, the time. Because you know that will create a, a big stress that maybe uh, you don't uh, relief and that who I don't know maybe get uh, what an uh, illness or something like that but in financial institution I guess that they work under pressure every day like the first answer said, uh, because they has to 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 achieve uh, well, uh, a lot of goals, uh, because you know uh, it's a it, it's a money it's a money game. We can so we can say that. And the answer number two, I never work in a restaurant, but I guess that. When it's a full, uh, when you have a full house, you have to move so quickly to serve all the clients and don't have any any compliance or something like that. Very good. No mistakes, right? So that is important. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, this is, I mean, uh, many works. Uh, we need to work under pressure. We need to work extra hours. So that is very common in El Salvador. So... Uh, yes, we need to not only answer this correctly, but be ready whenever this happens, right? Yeah, that's right. Last one. Give an example of when you show leadership qualities. Marcus. Okay, give an example when you show your leadership qualities. Applying for a leadership position, you'll definitely get asked this behavioral interview question. Keep in mind, though, that is that this question doesn't necessarily mean that you should have a hill managerial position when the interview is asking for a situation when you took the initiative and led a project or initiative. Um, well, please continue. Possible answer. Go ahead, yeah. As an entry level marketer, there was not much space for me as a software company in. My main tools do involve doing research and completing whatever tasks were assigned to me. 
uh, during a content marketing brainstorming session, I came up with an awesome idea to market the company. The gist of it was we interviewed company clients who were very successful at using the software, create cases, studies, and what exactly they're doing, and included in our email marketing strategy. The chief marketing officer loved the idea and put me in charge of executing the project, which is which I did it with flying colors. Okay, what do you okay. get from this? Okay, um, okay, and um, for example, when the interviewer asked for um for um, this this kind of of, of question, and uh, we have to give the the best answer um related with the qualities of leadership that we have, for example, um how we can manage a project or how what kind of 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 teamwork worker we we have to to have in, in our team to achieve the goal we have to give we have to give the answer related with the digital quality and how we can handle the pressure and how we can manage a team and also how how um we can be credit creativity. Yeah, I don't know how to say. Creative. Uh, creative. Yeah, and creative. Um, and we have to give that kind of, of answer. Um, even though it doesn't mean that we are applying for a a position, because um sometimes they. They ask that, that kind of question just to know in the future how how accurate it will be for them to use um to use us as um a project manager for example. So we have to give the best answer in that way to show our leadership quality and and how we can handle the pressure and, and manage the a team. Okay, very good, perfect, very nice. Okay, so this is the very end of this part that is like kind of questions that we can expect in an interview, uh, an interview in English, an interview about any kind of position. And uh, well, the first uh, question is, what do you think about all these things that we have checked? There were many, but I guess they are good. But what do you think about this? Teacher, for me, they're very helpful. Um, I, I, I always wonder how would I manage so many questions in interviews and believe me, uh, now I have, um, I have a clear idea what, what is okay to say, what is not okay to say, and it's very helpful. Okay, very good, perfect. Yeah, you know, uh, this is not part of the program, but sometimes it's a very good idea for us to check into this. Okay, so let's do something. We are going to practice them. So we are going to make fake interviews, mock interviews is the name of that one. So um, who wants to be the first one is the question. We're gonna practice English and interview and questioning and things like that, so everything together. Any volunteer for the very first one? Hello. Me, teacher. Okay, let's go ahead then. Very good. So we're going to start with like a normal way, right? Hello, how are you? My name is and something like that. And then I'm going to ask you just a few questions, three or four maximum, and then we're going to go to the next person, okay? 
So here we go. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Um, fine, thanks for asking. Perfect. Well, my name is Eric and welcome to the interview. Uh, can you please tell me your name? Uh, my name is Fernando Gonzalez. Perfect. Where do you live, Fernando? I live in Congo, Santa Ana. Very well. So we're going to start with the um, interview. So tell me about yourself. I am uh, I am in, um, 38 years old. I am a system engineer. Uh, I, as a professional, I have experience uh, work with systems. My my expectation is system administrator. In my personal life, I have two children. I live with them. I enjoy them very much. And as a personal quality, I am a very responsible person. I like to learn by myself. And I love reading. Okay, very good, perfect. And how did you hear about this position that you are applying for? Oh, I saw the, the offer in LinkedIn. And I, I read about the description of the job and I decided to apply. Very good. Why do you, why do you want to work in this company? Uh, because I need to grow out as a professional. And this is a very good opportunity to prove myself and apart to the company, all my knowledge, all my, all my experience. And I don't know, it's both, uh, we will win. Okay, very well, perfect. Thank you very much. We will let you know. Okay, <laughs> how did you feel it? Uh, yeah, I good teacher. I, I have I have experience in this kind of interview. Okay. All, all, all the time I was rejected. I have experience. Very good. Perfect. So uh, yes, uh, just remember that what we're learning here is that uh, it's very good for you to tell your skills and an example on anything that that we are telling. So you can sell yourself. So that is very important. Good, so let's okay. practice with something else. Somebody else, I mean. Thank you, Fernando. Anybody wants to be the second one? Hello. Let's do it then, Juan Miguel. Very good. So they're the same, the same dynamics. I'm gonna, we're gonna greet each other and then I'm gonna ask the questions, okay? Okay. Okay, and try to remember the structure that is supposed that we're learning, right? That is like, yes, this is this, is this, this is the example, and move on. So, hello, how are you? Hello, good evening. I'm fine, and you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. So, my name is Eric, and uh, may I know your name? Yeah, my name is Juan Miguel Brand. Nice to meet you, Juan Miguel. Okay, thank okay. you. So we're gonna start the interview. So uh, could you please tell me about yourself? Okay. Uh, I I am 38 years old. Uh, I am systems engineer, but I uh, I specialize with uh, tech support and infrastructure services. I have a fifth. No, 16 years, uh, 16 years of experience in, in this area. Uh, I began uh, in 20, 2006, okay, uh, with a lower level of support and, and doing something uh, programming. And uh, I have been escalated through the years to, to this level. I think my, my support level is, uh, I can attend level one, two, and three, okay? And uh, that's for my work. And for my experience uh, is on government uh, and uh, a couple of clients uh, outside in 
private uh, companies. Um, I don't know what else. Okay, perfect, thank you. And uh, tell me, what are your strengths? Okay, my strengths are, uh, personally, I think I'm a responsible person, okay? Uh, on the other hand, uh, if I do know something, I look for, for this until the problem is solved, okay? Uh, there are uh, problems or things about uh, configurations, uh, settings, uh, deployments, and something like that. And if I don't have the, um, the right, uh, uh, cap not capacity, but uh, the right lines, I do research by myself, or I, I do research by myself. And after that, uh, I put all this knowledge uh, in order to solve the problem until the problem is really solved, okay? Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. And tell me what are your weaknesses? Uh, my weaknesses, if I can, if I can uh, tell you a weakness or a point of weak for me, it's, uh, I am very, um, um, focused on one thing until the thing is uh, correctly solved or correctly, uh, yeah, so not talking about problems. I'm talking about uh, general situations, okay? Like uh, a setting that is misconfigured or a administrative situations, okay? like a trade with a, uh, providers or another client. Uh, I think is, is one of my point of weakness, uh, uh, being very, very focused in one thing until, until it's solved, okay? Okay, very well, perfect. And what do you know about our company? Okay, I know that your company is already 15 years in our country. Uh, you are very, um, um, you have a, a, a wide, um, a wide uh, range of develop in your, in your area or in your industry, which is uh, telecom telecommunications and I think uh, uh, you have not asking uh, me, but I think is one of the most important companies in the industry. And I think for me is the best opportunity to take uh, my career to another level, okay? Not for government, but also uh, in, pri in the private sector. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you very much. We will let you know. Okay. Okay, Thank how you. did you feel it? How do you feel it? Uh, kind of nervous, okay, <laughs> because, <laughs> because uh, in an interview, uh, is very fluent the, or, or must be very fluent the communication between the two people, okay, or between the group. And you don't have to be like uh, insecure or uh, things that uh, that you are muted so much time, okay? So you have to, uh, like the video that we saw yesterday, uh, have a, a kind of a kind of a script. And in some situations you have to uh, uh, to improvise, okay? But obviously taking, uh, taking all your weaknesses, taking all your strengths and all your situations in order to uh, make, a, make the best uh, experience for the people who are uh, interviewing you. Uh -huh. And uh, 
I don't know, trying to demonstrate that you are capable of, of the tasks or activities that the new position is being in, um, require. Require, okay. Very good, perfect. So you are you are so true. I mean, I know that this is just a practice, right? But even when it's just a practice, sometimes we're nervous. Like when when here we hear the question, it's like, oh my goodness, what do I say, right? And I know that you can say whatever, but it's a good practice. So not only for English, but also for the interview. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Okay. So who wants to be the next one? This is your time, my friends. Nobody. Nobody knows. They're afraid. <laughs> the, yeah, I know that you're nervous, but this is just a practice of English. If you don't say, I will choose, of course. So, last chance, who wants? Okay. Go ahead, teacher. Yeah, I'm going to choose anyway, right? So, <laughs> let's see. Mini, mini, mo. Um, let's see. Anna Claudia. My goodness, I knew it. <laughs> that is the first letter that you see on your screen. <laughs> what, what did you know it? I mean, it's, it was yeah. just... Uh, because maybe... it's the first letter, the A. <laughs> and I was, maybe Ada is there, maybe Ada is there. <laughs> I, I guess that you called me with your mind. I'm going. It's going to be me, it's going to be me. <laughs> okay. The dynamic is the same, okay? So let's see. Um, hello, how are you? Hello, uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. What about you? I'm very well as well. So, and uh, well, my name is Eric. May I know your name? Yes, my name is Anna. Perfect. So, welcome to the interview. We're going to start right now. Okay. Okay. So, tell me about yourself. Well, uh, I'm an easygoing person. I am uh, very friendly and I know that I can uh, get well with uh, working at teamwork with the people in the company. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay, very good, perfect. And uh, tell me, why should we hire you? Do um, wish I knew it. Isa, pregunta siempre la hacen. Well, I... Uh, I work it. I'm able to work in 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 a teamwork. I'm able to learn new tasks, and I have the the willing to assist uh, to someone when I handle the topic or I know a procedure. And uh, if someone needs assistance, I'm able to do it. But also, I'm a responsible person. I'm pretty sure that I will accomplish the, the sales goals. I like uh, to sell. And I'm pretty sure I can improve and get, a, get su uh, give support to the team uh, working right now. I'm pretty sure I will add revenue uh, to this project. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay very good so the next question is uh what is your greatest accomplishment i accomplishment i know my greatest accomplishment um Mm -hmm. In my, uh, I think the greatest accomplishment is sometimes I must be showing patience with new hire or new colleagues because um, they we need to understand the new the spam. So, for example, I'm an 
Xer, and I know millennials, they do not work the same as baby boomers. And sometimes uh, I uh, need to work and give additional guidance working with new members in the team because they just want to learn uh, things just uh, with the explanation of one time. And then as they don't get all the information, so they are asking the same thing every, every scene. So um, I always ask them to take notes. That would be my accomplish to demonstrate um, additional patients and help them to, for the, they to see the importance of taking notes for new procedures. So they can return and check and follow the right steps and so on and so on. Okay, very good, perfect. So thank you very much. And of course we will let you know. <laughs> You're not hired. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, let's move on. The next is going to be Jose Wilfredo. Okay. Okay, the same dynamic, okay? So, hello, how are you? So far, so good. What about you, Eric? I'm very well. So, welcome to this interview. And of course, we're going to get started, okay? Okay, perfect. So, I'm good. Ready. Nice, good. So tell me about yourself. Well, I'm well with my wife. I I'm been prepared for this position for a lot of couple of months. And I also maybe I review some interesting things that maybe you are you are interested in on. Um, I heard that you're looking for somebody that maybe know about a uh, workforce, right? I heard that you are looking for that for that requirement. Okay, that's fine. Perfect, very good. So that is interesting. And uh, what are your uh, salary expectations? Oh, my salary expectations. I'm not high, I'm not lower, maybe in the middle. I heard that maybe for this position, yeah, there are a lot of companies that are paying like one, 1,200, but maybe with 1,000, it's okay. Okay, that sounds very good. And yeah, that's um, right, because I know what I do. Perfect. And what are you looking if you get this new position? Well, what I'm looking for is an, a company that I can grow up. And I heard that your company provide a good uh, opportunities to do it. So that's why I'm applying for this company. Okay, good, very good. Okay, and uh, the last question. Uh, are you considering other positions in other companies? Uh, yes, maybe one, well, uh, what I can develop correctly, because you know, when you are positioned in, in some uh, companies, maybe you be positioned uh, whatever, in whatever place, but maybe you are not able to, to develop correctly. But if this, in case that this will be the, 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 the option maybe I could I could do my best effort. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. Okay, very well. Thank you very much. And of course we will let you know. Good, good, nice. It was very good actually. Let's see the next one. Heidi. Hello, Heidi. Not possible. Okay, the next one then is going to be a Giselle. Hello, teacher. I don't feel ready, but let's do it. <laughs> okay, it's just a practice, don't worry, so. I know, but 
Thank you, Buzz. Thanks in English. <laughs> it's just the first experience, but whenever you do it in the real life, you will be fine. I know. Okay. Okay, so, um, hello, how are you? Hello, very good actually, and you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. So tell me, um, well, we're going to start the interview right away, so tell me about yourself. Well, uh, about myself, um, my name is Juliana Cañas, I have 27 years old, and I graduated in business administration. Actually, uh, I work for Claro El Salvador and I'm looking for, um, I don't know, maybe a better opportunity. And what else about me? Well, um, and this is when I freezed. I don't know how to say. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, the microphone is yours. Um, what else about me? Well, my favorite. I don't know how he is seeing or something like that. And this is when 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 I remember the thing that we read in the in the last class. <laughs> you don't have to talk about your personal self. You they don't they don't want to know your personal life. And well, about me in my professional area. Well, I graduated about three three years ago and I I don't know uh, most of my 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 experiences are in the administration area and now my actual position is I'm an assist an assistant from the country di director for Claro Salvador and have around eight months in this position yep okay very good perfect so what is uh, the greatest achievement that you are proud of proud of in general my life professionally talking maybe when i worked in my uh, how do you say monographia just like that uh yeah i like, guess that's the word monography monography uh, was uh, one of the success cases, and I worked for Camara de Comercio and 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 also with the university, and the results was uh, of this monography was one of the best cases uh, for 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 the I don't know one of the best results for the university, and the. And the Camara, La Camara de Comercio gave me an, uh, an a recognition about this 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 monography that was a uh, about reduce um, I don't know how to say teacher um como desperdicios waste like the waste but not a, not about money it's about the I forgot materia prima. That is raw material. Raw material, yeah. So we and at the same time we can reduce the 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 cost in this in this. And so I think that that that, that was one of my best or my best achievement in general, professionally talking. Very good, interesting. And what kind of environment do you work best in? <laughs> Um, maybe when I can use or I can administrate my time because you know I know I know that I work well under pressure but when if, if I have a or, or my boss or the manager give me the opportunity to administer my time I can separate the most important things for the, the things that maybe can wait a little bit longer. So I prefer to work with with people that that have confidence in my work and 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 that I I like to to uh, to administrate my own time. Okay, very well, very interesting. So thank you. Of course, we will let you know. 
Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good, thank you, Giselle. So let's uh, check with okay. somebody else's. Uh, let's see, um, Danny. Okay. Very good. So hello, how are you? Um, I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Very well, so, uh, well, my name is Eric and we're gonna start the interview. So tell me uh, about yourself. Well, um, my name is uh, Dani Garcia and I'm 32 years old and I'm an uh, industrial engineer with a master's degree in business administrator, administration. And well, um, I have a, like um, almost eight years a working on um, or helping the, the company to build a resilience through the um, the build of a all kind of continuity plan, disaster recovery plan for that IT. Um, and well, um, I have been uh, formed in in that kind of, of subject and with um, uh, with the foreign um, how can I say um, programs or or uh, or trainees um, um, in in that time um, I'm working on uh, Banco Pro America um, and I'm, I'm leading or I or implement a, a management, a business contingent management system, system. And I like uh, in the personal, I like uh, to read, uh, to learn new things and to learn new skills and like um, business intelligence or data and, and data visualization and the process uh, uh, ETL and, and what else? And, Yes, that I am. I am a very, I think, a very normal person. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So, tell me, how do you see yourself in five years? Well, I see myself with um, I see in a better position than I have today. Um, uh, because I am I'm working on, on that on, on be better uh, every, every day. Um, well, also um, maybe with a family. <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet if I want to have kids, but um, <laughs> maybe it is a possibility. You you never know. Um, but yes, with uh, uh, getting married <laughs> in that in that in that time, um, well, um, just that. Okay, perfect. And uh, tell me, how do you feel about working on the weekends or late hours? Um. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, but <laughs> <laughs> you're being honest. No, <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, uh, I have uh, all my time that I have to work. I, I worked uh, from uh, Monday to, to Friday, uh, but um, maybe if the opportunity um, it's worth it, and I, I will, I will do it. 
Okay, perfect. Of course, we will let you know. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this was the last one. We didn't have more time for the other one. So the question is, how did you feel it? I mean, I know that reading and saying, oh, that is a good answer is different than being in an actual oh, interview. Of course. Right. Of course. <laughs> Nobody wants to work with me, did you? <laughs> oh, no, of course. I mean, that, that, I mean, this is just a practice, uh, but it's for you to see how important is this. I mean, I know that when you are going to go to a real interview, you are going to prepare, you are going to analyze, you are going to know, I mean, the real position and know how to, uh, what are maybe the requirements so you can say things, but we need to be ready. And uh, well, these uh, little things that we did, not only the interview, but also the reviewing of the questions is because of that. I want you to be ready, even if the interview is in English. And if it's in Spanish, it's even uh, easier, right? So we just mm -hmm. need to, to do it in that way, provide examples and you are going to be very good. Okay, for tomorrow, we have a homework. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is this. You know that the whole thing here is to uh, the training. So what we're going to do is this. You are going to bring something that you are going to explain to the class, like a training, like a little training. It doesn't have to be a long thing. So how you can fix this, how you can do this, create this, avoid something to happen. Something that is very easy, okay? Don't complicate yourself. You don't need to create any presentation or anything like that. You will have like around five minutes and that's it. That is for tomorrow. And uh, is it clear what we're gonna do mm -hmm. tomorrow? Questions about that? No. Okay, also remember that we need to finish the platform tomorrow during the day. And also remember that tomorrow we're going to do the the survey. I know that one person said that he did it already. Not a problem. I mean, we cannot do anything about it. But remember that we're going to do it tomorrow, right? So that is very important. And uh, for the rest, well, everything is fine. So we're going to check the attendance and then we go and rest. Ada Tena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marco Rodríguez Ayala. Present. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brán Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernandez. For you is the 101 today as Suleima. So, uh, I'm sorry, somebody has a question or anything? No, I say present. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Roxanne. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow, Dreaming English. Tomorrow we finish. So, see yeah. you. Bye -bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye -bye. Good night, good night. Good night. Teacher, good night. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, you said uh, tomorrow is the last day or Thursday? Tomorrow, during the day. Ah, okay, okay, perfect, perfect. So Thursday is free. Day yeah, of... Thursday we don't have any classes anymore. So we finish tomorrow the module and you need to finish the, the platform if you haven't finished uh, that before the class. Okay, okay, perfect, teacher. Thanks. Good night. Perfect. Good night. See you around. Okay. Uh, hello, Ivan. Hello, teacher. Uh, it seems that you're sick, right? Yeah. 
I'm not good. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that one. I hope you feel better. So we're, it's, this is going to be very fast. So just two questions. The first one is, how do you feel that you're moving on with the English classes? Do you feel that you're learning? Yeah, I like uh, the way that, that you teach English. And I like the topics. And I think uh, that all, all that things are uh, very interesting. Um, because there are new things, a lot of new things in that level, and that's good. And the better way to to learn is practice. Definitely, that is so true. And the other question is if you have any questions about anything in the class, in the platform. Well, uh, uh, I didn't, I didn't do. Uh, homework in the unit too because I don't understand because I try and try and I give up. <laughs> uh, which one don't you understand? Do you uh, I try to uh, do the, I think it's the first one in the unit too. Mm -hmm. The first homework. I don't know. I'm not sure okay. that I try in many ways and I couldn't do that, that homework. Yeah, I know which one you say. I'm gonna show you right now. So you, if you have the time, you can check it or you can see the video tomorrow so you can do it. Okay. So uh, yeah, this is about, um, well, I'm gonna show you the answers, okay? For example, the first one, it says there are problems, not only, and that is the part that is important, not only with the children, but also with their parents. And the period is also important. Okay, number two is going to be, she not only writes plays for television, but also acts in movies and the period. Number three should be, not only, I not only send him many, uh, many let me see, letters, but also try to telephone him. So and the period as well, something like, some like, if you leave a blank, of course that is going to cause some problems. Number four, he not only was upset, but and this is a problem. So here you have to write Oslo, not also. <laughs> so it's a problem with that one. So, okay. Number but four. Oslo, yeah. Oslo angry in the period. Number five should be they not only need food, but also medicine. The other part, <laughs> he can neither speak nor write English. Number two, he neither ate cake himself nor allowed others to eat it. Number three, you should neither meet him nor talk to him in the period. Number four, she is neither beautiful nor intelligent. And number five, neither James nor Peter passed the test. Okay. So uh, I maybe you didn't take that uh, right now, but if tomorrow you see the video, you will be able to just finish uh, that one. Okay, thank you, teacher. It's a pleasure. So I hope you feel better. And of course, I hope you can continue with English classes. See you tomorrow and uh, rest very well. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, bye-bye now. Good, Good night. night. Good night, thank you.